Let's take a look at the easiest melee to play in 10 to 5. In terms of difficulty, in terms of how many guides you need to be able to do big damage. Can you even do big damage? Do you have the skill to do it? Or can you play it with your eyes closed? All of this of course is subjective, but it is what I believe to be the hardest and easiest melee specs to play as a main, as an alt, at whatever you want to do. Starting off with arms, arms has always been a little bit of a an average spec to play in terms of how you're usually doing your rotation. It has had a little bit of a death in Dragonflight in terms of how you're like matching up all of your little burst windows and cooldowns, but in terms of difficulty, it's not really that difficult as well. And the tier set right now doesn't really change too much. You kind of just play the same arms as you always did. I kind of want to put it around okay. -ish. It's a little bit of a middle of the pack. It's not it could probably be easy, I can see if uh, if you main arms regularly, you might find this a little bit easier. It's not particularly difficult, but if you haven't played arms in a while and if you, if you come playing any other specs, it might take a little bit to realize that maybe you need to understand your weapon swing timer to get a little bit of a rage how your cooldowns work and uh, it's, 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 it's about it, it's about it, it's average, okay? Assassination Rogue, uh, currently part of my main, I would put it into hard. It is a notch a little bit ahead of arms, it uh, requires a little bit of a planning, a little bit of a throughput, it has a specific rotation that you can adapt a little bit to your environment. For instance, in raids you're probably gonna play the same, depending on when you have ads, your opener is a little bit long and a little bit tricky, but you can definitely pull it off because it gets easier the more you play it. In AoE in Mythic Plus, or if you have, I don't even know if there's a raid fight, maybe for Rock, where you might want to change how you're doing your cooldowns, rather. Um, you will have to adapt a little bit to how many mobs you have to face, if you have Vanish ready and things like that, which is something that you have to kind of make a decision on on the fly, with a little bit of a knowledge of the spec, with a little bit of knowledge of the combat that's going to happen, so that it's, it's gonna see it a little bit uh, in front of arms. And no matter what spec you play, it's a lot easier to play it if you record your gameplay with today's sponsor, Outplayed, which is how we actually get a lot of stuff done in at Marcelin Online, especially when we have to play a lot of other specs. We have to record a lot of footage, obviously footage that you see on the screen as well, and going over some cool moments like what we can use in terms of our edits or what we can, you know, share with our friends because you can definitely do that. We use Outplay because it makes it so much easier to select all of the little clips that I want from a particular recording of a dungeon of a raid fight and then um, either use it in a video, clip it or share it with your friends or my friends rather. <laughs> in this case, I'll share it with your friends, of course, any time of the day by just using the little buttons that you have, like just a couple of buttons. You can share it everywhere across your social medias, mostly Discord because everybody's on Discord nowadays. And all of this is, of course, free. The app is free. You can click the link down in the description to download yours and support the Marcelo Online team by getting outplayed as well. And it will make recording any type of games, not just World of Warcraft, so much easier. And you can just edit all of it on the fly and have all of your footage ready to go. Thank you, Outplay, for sponsoring this video. Let's check how Outlaw is doing these days. Um, Outlaw... Okay, so obviously this is from my personal bias, so I will put it in hardest. It feels a little bit harder than Assassination. It's, it's kind of a different difficulty. Assassination has an understanding, a tactical and knowledge-based difficulty that can be overcome with a lot more experience. Outlaw has a more mechanical and reactive difficulty, which can still be overcome with a lot more experience. However, mechanical difficulty seems to be a bigger barrier of entry for a lot of people than just simply understanding since, you know, Kind of has to do with your fingers being fast, and if your fingers are just not that fast, you might find it harder to wrap your head around Outlaw than it is to wrap your head around Assassination, for instance, which is where the rogue kind of is nowadays. Outlaw just is a merry-go-round of procs and combos, and you have to be very, very careful if you really want the most amount of damage to hit your global just at the right time so you don't put your between the eyes on cooldown just because you fit it just as Sutterfuge ran out or when your Shadow Dance just ran out. That is actually very important and it happens way more often than you think, by the way. But it's what makes this spec fun, it's what makes it a pleasure to main. It is a little bit hard, maybe one of the hardest melee today to play, but it is incredibly fun. Survival Hunter is always um, a hit or miss with uh, with me in terms of how it actually plays. 
it has an interesting possibility and it has the potential of being a difficult spec. It used to be a lot more difficult than it is nowadays and uh, well now you just throw bombs and Fury of Deagle. I would probably put it around okay-ish. It's about average in terms of its difficulty. It's not particularly difficult, it's not particularly easy. It doesn't have a lot of things going for it in terms of complexity and depth, but its playstyle is a little bit unique and the tier set kind of definitely wants you to use Fury of the Eagle differently than maybe you would be used to using it. It does have some optimization that you can get through, but at the end of the day, it becomes incredibly simple. It's a very fun spec in terms of how it's offering you your feedback when you go into your rotation. And maybe because I've made it in the past, I don't see it as being particularly difficult, but it does have a little bit of a barrier of entry, which is why it is at okay. Enhancement, I think it might not surprise everybody, it might even be harder than Outlaw, is the piano spec. It's similar to Outlaw. It's probably not as fast paced as Outlaw, but then again, my enhancement that's doing 18s, 20s right now doesn't really have that much haste, but neither does Outlaw. Uh, however, Enhancement is kind of like a combination between Outlaw and Assassination in terms of like how you want your brain to function when you play the spec. You have procs that you have to react to, like uh, quite quite very important and uh, fast-paced procs, but you also have a little bit of a, a planning that you need to do, a little bit of a tactical uh, know-how that you need when you go behind the wheels of an Enhancement Shaman, plus you have a lot more utility that you can use for your party, which uh, neither Assassination nor Outlaw has in terms of, you know, providing support for your friends outside of just crowd control, but that's essentially Enhancement. I would probably consider it a little bit more difficult than uh, Outlaw, so maybe it is, or maybe it makes more sense to be here if it's the most difficult melee spec so far, as in it's not the easiest, it's far from being the easiest spec in the game. Feral Druid, uh, probably still around okay-ish. Uh, it's not... So, okay, this is this is a little bit of a back and forth that I have with a bunch of people. Feral used to be particularly difficult and hard to pull off. It's not that straightforward. I kind of want to put it into easy, but I did play Feral quite a bit. And it does feel like, uh, you know, kind of matching a little bit your cooldowns. It's not that... I mean, it's it's around the same level as Arms and, and Survival Hunter. Feral Frenzy, Convoke, if you do play these, which kind of adds a little bit of an extra thing to do as Feral, is really fun and it does get harder to maintain your combo point economy properly if you play Feral Frenzy and Convoke, which uh, I know that a lot of, of, at least a few raid fights used to have these builds viable on them, although that was about three weeks ago, so I don't know if anything like that changed, the playstyle is still there, Feral hasn't really changed, but that's where it was. It can be easier if you play it a little bit more, but going into that might take a little bit of a barrier of entry, but I cannot really put it at the same level of assassination. Not just yet, maybe sometime in the future. Frost DK. Whoa, where am I going to put Frost DK? I think, I think I have to put it into easiest. Uh, the tier set doesn't do a lot in adding complexity. You just fire chill streak whenever it's available. The understanding of your throughput and your skill expression as Frost Decay is fairly limited in terms of what you do. I mean, it's no unholy, and it's pretty straightforward. You press your one proc or two procs, you have what? You have Rhyme and you have Killing Machine as procs, your main procs anyway. You want to make sure that you're in Death and Decay when you're in AoE, and you kind of do the same thing no matter what, whether it is AoE, whether it is single target. Now, this is mostly because the majority of people play Obliteration, and Obliteration seems to be the probably best performing. I mean, both Breath of Syndragos and Obliteration are kind of performing equally, I want to say, because when you look at the top Frost Decays, whether it is in Dungeons or in Raids, both builds are basically taken to the same level of high-end content. So that means both have the potential of actually clearing the high-end content. Breath is a little bit more difficult. With Breath, maybe I would bump Frost Decay into easy, but considering that now you're probably going to be playing Obliteration, especially if you really want that legendary, you're not going to be playing Breath with a two-hander weapon, then you're probably going to be in the easiest. And even with Breath, the rotation is almost the same. You just remove your Runic Power Consumer during Breath and you just do the exact same thing. So it doesn't really change that much. Compared to the other melees in the game, I would probably leave uh, Frost Decay at easiest. Fury Warrior. Now, if I do put, <laughs> if I do put Frost Decay there, do 
Do I put Fury uh, in the easiest as well? Well, you're not pressing Raging Blow anymore, which is a meme for Fury right now, but you do have Odin's Fury, which is an extra button as well. You have Dragon's Roar. Of course, you can play with Shockwave. So it's not like the, people like to meme on Fury that it's now a two button spec. Kinda, but not really. You do have a lot of mini cooldowns that you can press uh, and do a lot of damage with. And you kind of have to be aware of how your rage functions so as to not waste it because the more rage you get, the better it is. And funneling and kind of like cycling your tier set buffs to bloodthirst in between rampages kind of matters and optimizing rage can matter because you do end up sometimes with a little bit of a downtime if you mess up your rotation. I know I did by playing a little bit of fury. I, I was surprised that I had a little bit of a downtime. That's probably because you don't have raging blow anymore. So kind of managing your rage properly will eliminate some of that downtime issue that you might have. With that being said, do I, I, I still, no, I, I think I still have to put in TGS. I don't know which one is easier between Fury and Frost Decay. Maybe Frost Decay because Fury seems to be punished slightly more than Frost Decay. But then again, this is uh, once again, my personal bias. Havoc Demon Hunter. Oh boy. Now this is, um, uh, slightly more controversial because I've played this at a moderate level and not at a higher competitive level. However, Havoc DK has such an easy time doing a lot of damage that I kind of find it hard to rank it as hard. I don't think it has to struggle as much as Assassination. I don't think it's particularly easy, but maybe it's harder than the other three, less easy than the other three in terms of its DPS. I can easily see Havoc being a hard spec or an easy spec. I particularly never really had issues with momentum playstyles. I know a lot of people uh, have mixed feelings about momentum playstyles and that can be a challenge to play in, sometimes in content. But again, this is my personal bias and here is probably one of the most controversial takes because I, I played with Havoc since day one when momentum was first introduced and going from no momentum or no Havoc in the game to that felt like a bigger barrier of entry than what Havoc is now, where it seems like momentum is constantly being adjusted. And I'm speaking of momentum, but I'm mostly referring to inertia as well, where they're constantly being adjusted to, to create a more smoother and more enjoyable gameplay for everybody, especially new people coming into Havoc. And it feels the devs have done a really good job at making that be a thing. Now, there is some complexity, of course, to Havoc. Not everything just comes and falls off the sky. It's not BFA anymore. Havoc does have a level of death to it. I can definitely see it being hard, but after playing Rogue, I just cannot see Havoc being at the same level as uh, Assassination in this case. Reds, also considered one of the easiest specs in the game. I have played all of them. I kind of want to put Red a little bit easy. There's not, it's not a big difference between Red and Fury, let's say, in terms of their overall rotation and how complex it is. However, Red does have Execution Sentence, which is a little bit more pretentious on your rotation than anything that Fury has at the moment. And on top of everything else, Red has a plethora of utility that kind of factors into you being able to play your class right. Because, sure, Red does a lot of damage and is really nice, and doing that damage is not particularly difficult, but if you are a Red, and you are in a party, people kind of expect a couple of things from you that are a little bit harder to do. Using Bop properly, using Freedom with Unbound Freedom, using your Sacrifice, using your off heals. When do you use your off heals as well? You have so many tools to deal with everything else that, that, that has just a little bit, a little bit more depth to the class. However, the rotation, in terms of if we just take the actual doing damage part of Red, it's probably at the same level as Frost Decay and Fury, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but the extra utility kind of sets it apart and I think it deserves to have that mentioned because Red struggled over the years, okay? Red deserves its spot at being recognized for everything that it can do in 2024 because it does it really well. Now, subtlety. Also, once again, a particularly harder spec to, to rank. It's, it's one of the difficult melee specs to play. Now, I don't know if I should put it into the hardest or hard. Um, I would probably put it alongside Assassination, however. I feel like um, it gets easier to perform well with Subtlety than it is with Outlaw, because um, even understanding what Subtlety does and how it does its damage is 
more than half the work. Whereas without law, that's like 20, 30% of the work. You still need to be physically able to react and press your buttons properly. And I messed up with my outlaw way more than I messed up on subtlety, although understanding how subtlety does damage takes a little bit more than understanding how outlaw does damage. But I think that's a healthy place for subtlety to be. I can very easily see it uh, going down into the hardest tier in terms of its difficulty. And uh, I guess for now it will stay there. I feel like maybe it would have a little bit more of a complex rotation if you also played Gormo's Bite because that has some other implications on your rotation instead of just doing damage, but that's not being played. Shadow Dust is probably the most death that you have right now in terms of understanding the fight when you want your cooldowns and how to adjust your cooldowns. But outside of that, it feels very similar to Assassination in terms of like how you have to plan your abilities and how important it is to hit that ability in the global in the right order that you need. That's kind of how salty is, although it, it's a little bit more flexible than assassination at that point. So there are these back and forths, okay, which is why I cannot see subtlety being at the hardest. Not yet, but it has the potential of being there and I can see that for some people. Unholy DK. I think we're going to definitely put this into the OK tier. It has a decent level of complexity, but not a lot. Not like what it used to be. And I say used to be like a boomer because that was a long time ago, but Unholy is actually kind of in the sense of everybody else. You do have a very specific opener. You do have a very specific cramp. So it does take a little bit to play your Unholy properly. And I think this is the place that it belongs. If anything, maybe we could move arms, survival, Feral maybe into the easy tier, but Unholy, I feel like it's kind of close to Havoc and how it kind of thinks of its damage windows, how it aligns everything and how you want to be positioned. Although Unholy is punished way more than Havoc the Monitor, I don't think it even comes close if you mess up your rotation or how many things can actually mess up your rotation. I think that's a, that's a solid place for Unholy to be. Windwalker, I have heard mixed opinions about the spec. I have played it. I don't find it particularly difficult. I don't find it particularly easy. So I think middle of the pack is where it belongs as well. Similar to all of the specs here in OK, it has its little things that you can optimize, the little damage windows, but most of it kind of feels like it plays the same. Um, you're not, well, I didn't use Whirling Dragon Punch, which I've been using for years. Of course, the top Windwalkers are going to play vastly better than the, the bottom Windwalkers or the even average Windwalkers, but I think this is that's a very safe place to be for Windwalker in terms of where you are, how you do. You kind of just play the same thing, reacting to that of GG procs, getting your spinning crane kick charges. You don't have Whirling Dragon Punch anymore, which it wasn't particularly difficult, but it was an extra thing you had to think about. Uh, I need my Sun Kick and my Fist to be on cooldown to be able to use Whirling Dragon Punch uh, blah 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 and all of that but with everything said this is where exactly the specs have to be and going from the easiest to hardest this is my opinion and if you don't believe me you can definitely try to play one of the hardest dps specs uh, enhancement right here that we made a video for and see for yourself if it is indeed not the easiest spec in the world to play thank you once again outplay for sponsoring our video and catch you next time bye bye